everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out on this gorgeous, perfect day. Um, I'm Sarah Shelley. I'm with Plastic Free QAC, and we're a local nonprofit committed to uh, reducing single use plastic pollution of all kinds. And today's event is the culmination of a true collaborative community effort. Last fall, during one of our um, COVID cleanups, we, uh, our group saw a, a big problem. And the problem was an unusually large amount of fishing line litter and no clear uh, place to dispose of it. So uh, we decided to take action and reached out to the Queen Anne's County Parks and Rec. And I'm really thrilled to say that uh, we received support every step of the way. And um, this newly revised re reel in and recycle fishing line recycling uh, program is the result of the hard work and commitment of a lot of people, several of whom you'll hear from today. But most important, we're also here to, um, to really spread the word about uh, the responsible fishing and to honor the birds, the osprey, all of the wildlife who end up suffering or losing their life as a result of entanglement in fishing line. Good afternoon, thank you. Um, I'm James Wood with Queen Anne's County Parks, Department of Parks and Recreation, uh, Public Landing Supervisor. And uh, daily we see litter, all kinds of litter, and uh, including fishing line, which is a challenge uh, at our boat landings and our fishing piers. And uh, Plastic Free QAC approached us back in October about partnering to revamp and expand an existing program that was started about a decade ago by Chesapeake Bay Environmental S Center. And um, as usually, all my bright ideas lead to more work for my friend Rusty Leeson. And, isn't that correct? <laughs> and uh, so he's gone out and installed uh, more of these uh, outdoor collection sites. Uh, at, we've expanded to more of our locations. In addition, we've worked with some local businesses to uh, have indoor collection stations like this one. Um, it's not new in Queen Anne's County to collect this, but we're really stepping it up. And um, there's a wonderful story about this osprey. A, a local resident uh, got this display organized and gave it to the Department of Natural Resources. It was a Queen Anne's County uh, resident that uh, had a, a, a platform in the Osprey got tangled up in the fishing line and, and it died. And so it's to use that event to get the word out about this hazard, um, we're glad to DNR to work with us on, on getting that here. Um, the really, the, what I tasked Sarah with is to go find me a free place to send this, this material because um, we're not going to say we're going to recycle it if we're not. And the, I'll give Berkeley credit for stepping up and accepting this line, giving us free shipping back to, to their company to uh, recycle it. So it's a real case of producer responsibility. And um, so how much fishing lines out there? You guys pick any up in your daily work? Uh, how much would you say? A little or a lot? A lot. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> we want to thank uh, Kristen Weed with uh, Ken Island. Uh, Beach Cleanup as well, who uh, does a lot of this work as well at, at other locations. And um, I want to acknowledge the Queen Anne's County Commissioners for supporting this program. Uh, Commissioner Moran uh, is here with us today, and he's going to say a few words. And Commissioner Dumanel, thank you for coming today and being supportive of what's going on at the Department of Parks and Recreation. And my boss, uh, Steve Chanley, the director, been very supportive of all the behind the scenes stuff we do. Um, so I'd like to introduce Commissioner Moran to, to say a few words and uh, thank you for coming out today and uh, let people know that Fish and Line can be recycled in many locations in the county. 
Thank you, James. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, first off, Commissioner Dumanel to my right, uh, you know, is, is a county commissioner along with myself. Uh, we've both been in the in the position for six, seven plus years. And one of the things that uh, when I first came on board at Queen Anne's County, uh, one of the first things I really got involved with was Earth Day. And, you know, Chris, and I, I'd like to give a shout out to you again for what you do with your cleanups. And, and I'd like to talk to you about it because we've got more areas that I think that we could expand on. But uh, this, is, this is a great collaboration. Collabor Help me out here, Phil. Collaboration. Collaboration between public and private. If I was, that's what Phil's here for. So, you know, I, this is, it, it proves that something that started 12 years ago with Seabeck, and we've got someone who's going to speak about that, hopefully, uh, is, is alive and well and running today. And this is one of those spots, as you can see, it's a very popular spot for fishing. And, you know, having these at six different locations, at six different businesses, having them at our, at our launch sites is, is a huge, uh, in, you know, uh, it, it only, not only is it good for the environment, it's good for those fishing. And I would say that, you know, this Queen Anne's County is known for its fishing, known for its waterways. And we want to keep those waterways clean. And, and any way we can do that, as commissioners, we are we are all in. I would like to say a special thank you to our rangers. We've got three of them standing back here for all that you do. Four of them, excuse me. Uh, Steve Chanley, director of uh, parks, who runs this whole operation. And James, when you drill down to it, he's the one responsible for right here. So again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. And uh, away we go. And Vicki, you're up next. Hey. Hi guys, I'm Vicki Paulus. I'm the Assistant Director of the Chesapeake Bay Environmental Center and I'm also on the Queen Anne's County Parks uh, Recreational Advisory Board. And I got to say to you, I'm looking at the audience today and a lot of you in this audience are supporters of the center, your volunteers and your members. And I'm so happy that you guys are all continuing on the work that we started many years ago with bringing this recycling station back to the forefront. Uh, we get a lot of calls at the center every year, and about 60% of those are monofilament entanglement. And I'll tell you, the day that we don't have to answer another call because of these stations, I will be so happy. The fact that they're outside, that they're inside, they're located all throughout the county, gives accessibility to everybody. And what that means is that we all can provide a stewardship ethic and show the future, the kids, really what to do with everything. Because if you don't think the people in the restaurants, on other boats, are watching what everybody's doing out here, they are. And the kids mimic that. So I think what we're doing here is a great thing. The wildlife, it's not only the migratory waterfowl or the birds like the osprey. It really is the turtles. It's the snakes, it's the fish. We see everything that gets entangled. So even though these stations are just a little thing, they can make such a huge impact. And I think for the future of Queen Anne's County, I think we're doing a great thing. And I'm interested to see the numbers of when things come in of how much we've recycled and kept out of the bay. So thank you. Hello, I'm um, Bill O'Brien with Shore Tackle and Custom Rods, a uh, uh, retail store over here. Um, I'm happy to be participating. Ms. Shelley approached me um, a couple months ago and asked me if it's something that I would participate in. We do a lot of relining of reels, um, thousands and thousands of yards per month. Um, for a lot of us that are out there, and we spend a lot of time on the water, and we see things like this, and, and, and we try to help. We see a lot of line in the water, and we see a lot of from turtles to everything else. So to me, it's, it, it, it was a pretty good program. Um, I thank Berkeley for stepping up to this and for Queen Anne for promoting it and, and, and coming out um, with this whole program for us. I mean, we're proud to be part of it. I think one of the things that you hear about on Fish Line, you don't really realize it, but it's estimated according to some, some information that I um, was given. You know, that this line lasts about 600 years before it starts to um, you know, decompose and go away. So that line that's wrapped around the turtles and the fish and the birds that we see is going to be here for some time so I really appreciate the the um, time and effort that's being put into it and we're glad to participate as far as one of the indoor locations so with that I'm going to turn over Mr. Captain Wright. Hi I am Captain Lamont Wright and uh, my father and I this is my father Captain Montre Wright and we operate uh, head boats right here at the Wells Cove Landing and my father, he's been in this business for over 60 years. I've been in it for over 40 years. 
I have my son here, he's third generation. He's been 20 years and he get his captain's license next week, hopefully so. And, and, and say with that, yeah, give him a hand too. Yeah, he's third generation here. And um, we operate here and we take people fishing every day out of, out of Wells Cove. And so firsthand, we get to see a lot of the, the string. And sometimes you have to catch people because they'll cut a piece and throw it in, throw it in. So a prime example, just today, um, give me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> just just the day alone, um, I gathered just a small piece of, of string that could have been in the water. And it, we don't want a negative impact on the wildlife and stuff. We want people to catch fish. So, I mean, we, we put it right here every day. But this is just a small example of what could have been in the water and, and really affected um, some of the wildlife. You know, so again, I want to thank um, everybody. I want to thank um, for, for inviting us to be a part of this and thank Berkeley and whoever else. I'm just, I'm just glad to be here and be a part of it. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I am Corporal Kim Austin. I work with Maryland Natural Resources Police. I am currently assigned to Queen Anne's County here. I have been with Natural Resources Police just past eight years now. Um, obviously, working on the water and stuff like that, we get a lot of calls at times for sick and injured wildlife. And of course, we have the boats and such to be able to get out there and assist. Uh, a couple examples of things that we've come across. Um, we did have last year in Queen Anne's, we had a blue heron that was tangled in fishing line and it was hanging upside down from a from a duck blind, but by the time we got there, it was already deceased for, I'm not quite sure how long. And then when I was assigned down in Charles County, I had a osprey that was tangled and hanging upside down from his perch on a piling. And because of the height of it, the kayakers that called couldn't obviously reach it. So I ended up tying my boat to the piling. I somehow, yes, I know I'm five foot, but I climbed to the top of the, po uh, the T top. And then I still couldn't reach it, so I had to fully extend a boat hook with like my pocket knife with some medical tape, and I could finally reach it, get it to come down, and then I just kind of belly flopped him on the on the boat. He didn't seem to care, so I finished removing all the line, securing that, and then getting him to shore just so he could kind of dry off. But there was no injuries or anything like that, so thankfully there were kayakers out there, and we were able to get out there to assist. So. Um, I know we pick up a lot of line when we're checking people and stuff just because we look at it and know we're going to end up getting a call because it's going to get caught around a duck or, or something else. So we try and do our part as well. So this is fantastic. I know I've used it from picking up stuff and throwing stuff away. I've seen people use it. So it's good. I'm glad that it's uh, going to be in more places. Um, I, I guess I'll just say a few words just because I'm, I'm here. Um, I, I think ultimately the success of this program is when people accept their responsibility. Um, when they, are, they choose to go fishing or use any of our, our, our parks, our landings, our nature preserves. Um, there's so many things that you can do at, at these locations and enjoy yourself. But you've got to be responsible. You've got to give back. In, in a lot of different ways. Christine Weed and Ken Island Beach Cleanup is a classic example of an organization, a group of people who volunteer to give back to the community because they enjoy using those areas. So if you're gonna fish, if you're gonna enjoy these areas, please accept the responsibility that comes along with them. And thank you very much for, for Steve Shanley and his crew and, um, and, and the efforts that they're, they're putting forth to make this a successful program again. Thank you. So there's a few other people that we want to give credit to that weren't able to make it today. Uh, first of all, uh, these wonderful enlarged rack cards that we got printed uh, by Fishergate Graphics, Susan Viana. And uh, we also got water donated by Colt Classic. And uh, that is about it for me. Well, we're really glad. <laughs> that we're getting the word out so thanks to QAC TV for coming out and any press that uh, 
heard about a press release just today. I, I saw that NBC Channel 6 in Idaho picked this story up as national news. So how about that? Yeah. So Beth, Beth Malaski and, and Doug Bishop with Bay Times, we, we thank you for your help. And uh, we're going to have a little ribbon cutting. There's plenty of scissors. Uh, and then we'd like everyone to grab a little bit of fishing line and, oh, and uh, uh, put it in our recycling containers here and over there. So uh, come on up and grab a pair of scissors. Yes. Come on. Come on. One, two, three. Yay! Yay! <laughs>